I want all of the romance in my fantasy. I don't want the romance to be a B plot. I want it to be the A plot. What are your thoughts on YA fantasy? YA fantasy is the bread and butter. It is the god tier genre. I love fantasy because I have always been a delusional person and fantasy helps me embrace that to an even greater extent, a magical extent. It is just something to me that's just very comforting. It's what I write because that's what I love to read. I was reading YA fantasy probably far too young, but now I have a master's degree in fantasy books, so it all worked out. What would you say to somebody who does not read why a fantasy? I would ask why not. <laughs> I don't know that there's any trope that I truly hate. I think there's always a way to do like a fresh take on anything, uh, including things that I think can feel really tired, like the chosen one. I wouldn't say the trope is specific to fantasy, but it happens in fantasy. It's miscommunication. Please just tell them. It'd be so much quicker. There wouldn't be as much of a plot, but the resolution would be nice. It just gets very stressful. But again, I have to acknowledge if they did communicate, the book would be like 300 pages shorter. So I get it. Probably friends to lovers because in YA fantasy, you want more tension, you want it to be a little juicier, you want the high stakes. So I'm definitely enemies to lovers girl. Oh no. Do I hate any trope? I don't want to yuck anyone's yum. I would say there aren't any fantasy tropes that I dislike. I love all of them so much. My perfect fantasy world would be a very whimsical one, like warm and inviting, but there's also like magic. My perfect fantasy world would have magic everywhere, not only in the people, but also in the nature and the world. But I do also love when there's a secret darkness kind of looming below it all. There's lots of magic, but I have the most magic. But people don't want to kill me because I have the most magic, because if you're the most powerful person in the kingdom or a realm, people probably want to take your power. But I'm like a really good person. Definitely want like, you know, really cool, fantastical food, fun, fantastical, like clothes. My perfect fantasy world is more of a light fantasy. I really like an accessible fantasy where it isn't super dense with like economic systems and languages and currency and, and all of those things are, are fantastic, but I'm much more character driven. So my perfect fantasy novel is about the characters and their arc more than just straight world building. I know people dread the info dump, but I actually really love world building. It is the reason I love fantasy is to escape and the world building is kind of your avenue for that escape. What kind of mythical creatures would populate your world? All of them. Mermaids, vampires, werewolves. New ones too. I love when authors create their own fantasy creatures and introduce us to them. That is the best part about fantasy. All kinds of mythical creatures. Ones you haven't seen before. A big dog that was part fish. That sounds grotesque, hang on. Vampires, for sure. I've been a vampire girly, like, since I was six years old. I'd say a vampire, but I feel like they'd be offended by calling them a mythical creature. So, the original Dracula was not meant to be sexy. Bram Stoker wrote him as, like, this evil monster who smiled at you, but was still going to kill you. And we as a society took that and just kind of said, make it sexy. Like, can we ship him with Mina? Like, I think so. She's hot, too. If I lived in this, like, fantastical world, I'd want to be able to interact with mythical creatures or, like, magical creatures that come from a lot of different countries or cultures. All kinds of mythical creatures. If there's been a mythical creature in a fantasy world, it's in this world. Well, if I'm on the sea, I need like some sort of sea serpent, unless it's like deadly and poisonous and like the problem, I don't want those. I want like the cool ones that are like cute and like badass, fun ones. I want all the romance. I want the book to be 90% romance and 10% plot. I am a romance girly. I am fantasy romance lover. So all the romance you can give me. I want all of the romance in my fantasy. I don't want the romance to be a B plot. I want it to be the A plot. I love romantic fantasy. That was really what I grew up on. I love all the romance tropes. If I can have romance and fantasy, I would definitely want both of them. I would say I'm a romanticy fan. Romanticy is the best of both worlds. If you're looking for romance, I've got good news for you. If you're looking for fantasy, I've got good news for you too. Fantasy is such a good vessel for romance because the stakes of fantasy really push the characters to be vulnerable and that really opens up the opportunity for romance. You can put your characters in situations in fantasy that really stretch them, maybe more so than in like a contemporary book. You get to stretch them out and see how they come back together. 
Low fantasy or high fantasy? Both. High fantasy can be a little hefty for me sometimes, and low fantasy sometimes doesn't have enough. I'm like Goldilocks picking the middle bear. High fantasy. If I'm gonna escape, I wanna fully escape. Low fantasy. I personally enjoy them more because they are usually more character driven. Rebel or royalty? Rebel. Rebellion sounds fun. Let's overthrow something. I have to say both again. I wrote both a royal family and a rebel, so I feel like I have to say both. Royalty. I would much rather have a tiara than a sword. A royal who is rebellious because you kind of get the glitz and the glamour of the fantasy royalty, but you also see somebody fighting back against the system and that shows their bravery because they're also part of that system already. And I think it shows a bravery that we can have in our own lives. Series or standalone? Series. I love longevity and what I read. Um, I love to get to know the characters and I feel like a series enables you to do that more than a standalone. I would choose a series because I like having more time. If I really enjoy it, I want more time in this world and I want more time with these characters. I'm gonna say standalone. I think there's something really satisfying about being able to live in a world for a set amount of time and go through the story and follow the characters on their journey and then you can close it and walk away. Series. I'm always a series girl. If I'm gonna be committing to a fantasy world and a magic system, I want to be there for a while. When I escape into a fantasy novel, it, it really is kind of like transcendent, not to sound like woo-woo or whatever, but it's being swept away. It's suddenly I am the character, I am the princess, I am the rebel. I often find myself reading fantasy to escape the real world because it transports you somewhere else. I don't know that I necessarily read it to escape real life problems. I do like the escapist aspect of like being in a world that's so different, where characters have problems that are very different from mine. Um, so I do like that aspect. Yes, I do read fantasy to escape, but I also love to read fantasy to kind of see a reflection of my own self and my own life in the characters. So I think it is kind of the perfect balance of an escape, but also a comfort for yourself. I mean, I don't know about you guys, but if your options are just like, everyday life or escaping into a fantasy book. Uh, oh, it's a fantasy book. I have four kids. They come in and all of a sudden I'm like, oh wait, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still just Shelby. But I mean, that escape even for a little bit is worth it, right? Mm -hmm.